So it's final. The German government won't supply tanks to Ukraine. This was reconfirmed by a politician from German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's party, the SPD, Mikhail Müller, on German TV on January 2nd. Hi, I'm Dr. K, a political scientist who takes apart the news so we can all understand it a little bit better. Today, we're talking about tanks, Ukraine, and the political disconnect in Germany. Leopard, or leopard tanks have been made in Germany since about 1979. And the German military generally has a cute naming system, mostly cats or other Instagrammable furberry mammals for its military vehicles. The Leo II is always compared with the US made Abrams tank when people compare tanks. Kiev has been asking for tanks, specifically the German-made Leopard Sans March. Armored vehicles help Ukrainian forces to move under fire and liberate the territories occupied by Russia. At the onset of the 2022 Russian invasion, Central and Eastern European countries, countries that have, in all honesty, viewed Russia with cold realism for a solid generation, sent hundreds of Soviet-produced tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, or IFVs, and armored personnel carriers to Ukraine. That equipment was something Ukraine could use because its army was already familiar with them. Oh, and when you hear Soviet tanks mentioned, they're a T-series starting with T-62, and that N number describes about the year they were made. So when the Russian army's tanks are discussed, you'll hear people mention the number like, oh, they were driving T-62s, or what they mean is tanks that are 60 years old. And that's an indication of the standard of equipment the Russian troops are working with. Experts knew the stockpiles of Soviet equipment from Ukraine's Eastern European supporters would eventually run out and that the West should get ready to send Western made battle tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. But to start 2023, the German government repeated its refusal to supply tanks. Lately, the SPD has been criticized for not seeing the Russian invasion of Ukraine for what it is. But it's not just the SPD. Russia brought itself into position while Germans were grasping at past cultural links to Russia, enjoying the cheap energy prices, and all had optimistic ideas about international relations. Since the late 50s, Germany has pursued a policy or policy variations of no stability in Europe without Russia, or Wandel der Kandel, change through trade. Germany's main priority, it says, is to avoid NATO becoming part of the war. But Russians and some others already think that the Kremlin is fighting NATO. You'll remember that Putin focused on NATO and tried to blame rising tensions about Ukraine on the military alliance's post-Cold War expansion. As Russian troops crossed the border on February 24th, Putin changed his tune and declared the crusade was now against Ukrainian Nazis. More recently, he's called Ukraine a terrorist state, while insisting that Russia is fighting against Satanism. And it seems that just like Putin's reasons change, the German reasons for not delivering tanks to Ukraine are also changing. Why not send tanks? Well, first, a German minister reportedly said he didn't want to support Ukraine because Kyiv would fall hours after an invasion. Then when they didn't, logistics were mentioned. Tanks need long supply chains and repair systems. Then optics were mentioned, with a German official saying back in October 2022 that if tanks were captured with a German Iron Cross, it would be the perfect occasion for Russian propaganda to say, look, NATO is attacking us. So it's, that is the perfect propaganda material to say, look, we always said it's NATO attacking us. Another argument is that nobody else is delivering modern tanks. But that argument doesn't acknowledge that although America has tanks, it doesn't, it's delivering something that Germany doesn't have, a patriot defense system. And now here's the kicker. Germany is actually the third largest supplier of weapons to Ukraine after the US and the UK. But it seems to blunder every step of the way. At the end of December, reports came out that a German assault bridge system was spotted in Ukraine. That's a much needed piece of equipment. There are similar reports about the maintenance of Western weapons in Poland being supported by Germany. Germany has also started producing the RCH-155 Boxer remotely controlled howitzer for Ukraine. That's basically a big land drone with a gun. Reports like these show 
that things are getting done for Ukraine by Germany. But they also show that in Germany, there seems to be a disconnect between the political level and experts at the functional level. German politicians can't manage to maneuver in the space left over as both the far left and far right have found something they can agree on, that Germany should not support Ukraine. While success stories like bridges, repairs, stinger rockets, and howitzers aren't being talked about because the functional actors in Germany don't prioritize good PR. Feel better informed? Make sure you follow me.